Okay, in this video, we're going to be looking at preparing written reports. First of all, you've got to have a place that you're going to repair, prepare that uh, report. Docs, Google, .com. So here's a blank document. Our written reports need to have a title, a demo written report. Because it is a title for ADA compliance, let's make that with a title and it needs to have an author's name. Make that uh, maybe a heading two size. The date today is uh, September 7th. I might want to make that a little nicer and uh, center all that. It's good to have a content section heading type two. Problem 2.2.1, other stuff, if in the report. So you've got the contents, often your problem, often your written reports will have a number of problems. So it's good at the top to have a contents. Let it begin by having the problem. So let's do that this size. Okay, so browse your way to module two overview, and then look at download chapter two. When you click on that, it doesn't automatically download it. It just shows it to you in a browser. You need to come over to these three dots over here and actually download the file. Although you can read it here, it's very hard to copy and paste things from there. Find in, uh, where your downloads are and find that chapter two remix that you've downloaded and open it from there. Now at this point, this is, is now searchable. So control find uh, 2.2.1. There's example 2.2.1. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for not table 2.2.1. We're looking for homework, 2.2.1. There it is right there. It's this problem, control copy. A lot of times I've given you some of the problem in the template and I haven't always given you the table that goes along with it. Sometimes you have to hunt around and find the appropriate table. Okay, so now we come to our written report part of a written report needs to repeat the problem there. So we copied and pasted it here. Um, now let's wrangle the data. Wrangle or among the data. That means to put it in a form that, that R can handle it. I'm going to make that a, a heading and we'll make that a heading size three. Now let's think about that data for a minute. There's the data that we need and there's some problems with it. It has a bunch of dollar signs in it and it has a bunch of commas where commas are not supposed to be. And we need to insert some commas in a few places. So let me copy that and go to an editor. This editor could be Word or uh, notepad or something like that. I'm going to use one on my system called gedit. So you find some editor that you can work on this in. These commas where we're marking off where the thousands and hundreds are, we need to remove those commas. I want to search for any commas and I want to replace it with nothing. I want to remove all those commas. Okay. So that's a nice improvement so far. Now I need to get rid of the dollar signs and I need to put some commas in place. Everywhere that there's a space followed by a dollar sign and I want to replace those with a comma and a space. Now that's looking much, much better. There are some things that I'm missing here. I need to have commas after all of these and I need to remove 
these dollar signs. I'm going to eventually want to save this in a vector. I'll call it X. Up your name for the vector that you're working on. I need to have a parentheses there at the end. Okay, now all of that I did in a little editor. I'm going to copy that. Control V and print out X. Just let's just see if it's working. So there, there I've got my data. Okay, so I've mung the data. It's now available to me. Okay, so I'm going back to our document. The median incomes of males in each of the states are listed in this particular uh, table of values. And we want to find the frequency distribution, uh, relative frequency distribution, and a cumulative frequency distribution uh, using seven classes. So I need to regroup this into seven classes. Let's look at that data again. So there's our data. You haven't done this before, but let me just do a strip chart of X with a character equal to 20 um, and show you what that looks like. What it's done is build a little box X for every one of those values and kind of spread them out. What we want to do is take this from that smallest one up to the largest one, divide it up into seven different bins and find out how many items are in each one of those bins. So what I need to know is what the minimum of my X's are. And there's a minimum command. I'll make a note here. And I'd like to know the maximum value, I'll call that big M, or the maximum of all the X's. And for our reference right now, let's just print those two out and see what they are. Okay, so there's the minimum and the maximum. Now, I'm going to make something that I'll call break zero, B zero. And let's have that be the minimum value minus just a little bit. Let's just minus a 0 0.5. Oh, hang on. Let me come back here and read the problem. It was seven classes. So I need seven classes here. I'm going to uh, make an object called N just so that I can remember. Seven. Um, number four bins that we're going to have in this distribution. So, so we're actually going to need to have eight numbers. We're going to have to have the, the starting boundary, the ending boundary, and have that cut up into uh, to seven pieces. That, just for interest sake, we'll make uh, B7 be uh, the maximum amount plus 0 0.5, a little bit beyond that uh, top value. Let's uh, build a, a, I'll call it SEQ for sequence. Let's build a sequence from one up to N. Okay, from one to seven. That's a shorthand way of, of uh, of making a sequence of numbers. Uh, just to show you that, let's look and see what the sequence is. It's just the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That was an easy way to do it. I could have created it with the C colon, uh, a C parentheses, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and close the parentheses. But this now, what I need to know now is how wide these breaks are going to be. I want to go from B0 to B7 and divide that into to seven pieces. So let's look at the width of the breaks. I'll just call that width. And we'll make that as B7 minus B0 and all of that divided by N. So, so I found this, this lower break 
this upper break, it was just a little bit below the minimum, a little bit above the maximum, and I divided that distance into seven equal pieces, so I know how, knew how much the, the width was. So now I'm going to be able to build all of my breaks, and we'll build it like this. We'll have B0, because we wanted that to be the starting place, and then we want to have B0 plus uh, the width times the sequence, okay? So when the sequence is one, then that would be B0 plus one width. When, zero, when uh, the sequence is two, that would be B0 plus two widths and so on. So there's the breaks. If you remember uh, that minimum, is the M, let's just look at it real quick. The minimum was 20, 22,529. And if we minus the 0.5 from that, we'd get that one. So that's our first break. There's our second break. We want to know how many numbers are within the, between the first break and the second break, between the second break and the third break. There's a special command called cut. We'll cut x, this vector x, with those breaks. We're going to say that right is equal to false. So let's look at those cuts now. So notice that this is doing scientific notation. So this is 41,500. Is... So we're looking at each of these values. See this value right here? That 42,951. It's between 41,500 and 47,800. And it goes to each one of these values and puts them in one of these categories. We'll call that categories. Okay. So now each of these numbers were made a categorical variable. It said which one of the bins uh, they were going to be in. So we can just do a table of the categories. And let's look at that table. So we had one in that first uh, category, zero in the second, eight in the next, and, and so on. Let's call that the x dot t for table. And then let's do a data dot frame of x dot t. So there we are. In this category, from 22,500 to 28,800, we had one. We didn't have any in this second bin. We had eight in the next bin, 24 in the next bin, 14 in the next, two in the next, and, and three in the last bin. Okay, we wanted to, to worry about wrangling the data. We we're breaking this up into pieces. So, control, copy. Wrangle the data. I used so there's that there's my explanation of what I did and so now let's find the frequency and maybe I'll move that to the next page so let's change that to a heading three so now I can look at my code and this piece of, oh, I call that a relative frequency table. It's simply a frequency table, isn't it? Okay. So there's my frequent, the commands for our frequency table. Control copy. Control V. Output from, from, this script is and copy that, paste that in. Looks like there's a little bit of cleaning up here that I need to do. Now find the 
relative frequency table. And that's a section heading. And we're doing those section headings as a heading three. Now that we've got this, this uh, relative, this, this frequency table, I know how to build a relative frequency table. I need to know the number of items in the data. Notice that I've used N up here. I should have used some other N because usually N counts the, the uh, sample size, not the bin size. But uh, I'll call it N sample size. And it needs to be the sum of the X frequency table dollar sign freak. Remember that dollar sign would take this table, okay, the x dot ft, and would strip out this vector. And if I added up that vector, it's going to tell me how many things are in this list. That and sample, just to see if we're getting the right thing. Okay, so if I process there, there were 52 of them. We can double check that value because remember we, we actually had the raw value here and we could have looked at the length of X and execute that, it should also be 52, okay? So, but if, if you're starting with a frequency table and trying to find out how many is in the sample, then you just need to sum up the frequencies. Let's put a, a, a note here. Uh, size of sample. So let's build the relative frequencies. I'll call it that. And we can build a frequency table, a frequency vector up here, which is x dot frequency table dollar sign freak. And then it's just handy for us now because now I can just take the sum of freak instead of having to Mess with that bigger thing. And this will be uh, the frequency vector divided by the end sample. And now we're ready to build the uh, relative frequency table, X relative frequency table. But uh, there's the size of the samples. There's the frequency vector. There's the relative frequency vector. And here's the relative frequency table, which is going to be a data frame categories and the relative frequency, X relative frequency table. So let's execute our code error. Oh, because I named this wrong. Oh yeah, it's not categories. Uh, I, I need to have the unique classes here. So what I need is unique categories. And that's going to be, so there's the frequencies and unique categories is going to be X dot frequency table. And we call those categories. These are the unique categories. So this needs to be the unique categories, unique categories and the relative frequencies. Let me come back and see what we had said so far here. Find the relative frequency table. So I've annotated my explanation well enough here. I just need to be sure that I'm getting the right piece of code 
to give, we had come up to the point that we had built the uh, x.ft. So there's our x.ft. And there we are building the relative frequency table. Paste that code in there. So I need to show my result. It's going to be this piece right here. Uh, so let's move this down so that it's on a separate page. <clears throat> the out from, the, from this script is this. It looks like there's a little funny thing that happened there. Clean that up. So there's our different categories and the relative frequency for each of those categories. Now, here's the other thing that it asked for here. And a cumulative frequency distribution. Because we need to have the output of that, and then we need to have find the cumulative frequency table. All right, so we need to come up to the to the frequency table, and we need to have one in this category, one plus zero in this category, one plus zero plus eight in this category. Uh, that 9 plus 24 in, in this one, and so on. Remember, we had that frequency vector somewhere uh, right here. We built a frequency vector. What I'd like you to notice, what's the cumulative sum of that frequency vector? Well, it's one in the first category. One plus zero is one in the next category. One plus zero plus eight will be nine in this category. One plus zero plus eight plus 24 will be the 33 in the next category. Cumulative, just call that uh, the cumulative frequency. Okay. So with that, now it's very easy to build a uh, data frame that has these category names. Those are the unique categories. Unique categories and the cumulative frequency. And so there it is. There's the one cat, there's the cumulative frequency. So that little bit of code is super easy to add. Uh, there's the script for it. Maybe I should have put some notes here that this is the, and there's the output. Grab that output. Control, control V. Okay. Oops. A little bit of editing cleanup there. I don't know why it does that. Okay. So there's the seven rows in a unique, in a cumulative uh, frequency distribution. Then, of course, if there's other problems in this written thing, then we'll have a new section down here, whatever the next problem is. <clears throat> and that will need to become a level two heading. Important notes. Let me just mention review notes. One. So you can copy and paste. Number two, you may to wrangle the data. And show our scripts or calculations. One, 
make observations. The key things are that you need to down, download the chapter remix so you can copy and paste things. You need to use an external editor sometimes. Sometimes we'll look at examples where we actually use a spreadsheet to help process some things. Um, explain what you're doing and show your R scripts for calculations. Show results and make observations. Okay, that's the idea.